So the options screen is where we can understand a little bit more about the click percussion and morph settings. Let's go into what those are. First of all though, we've got the master volume and tuning up here. So tuning is just in sense of a semitone. So you can tune up or down there. Your volume, master volume, that's zero dB and you can also plus it depending on your settings. You may want to do that if you've got very low settings in your draw bars, for example, if you were kind of exploring a very thin sound and a quiet one for some reason up here, you can look at your volume level down here and it's actually really not that big. So you might want to nip in here and pop it up a bit, but unlikely. Most of the time you want to be controlling your volume with a healthy amount of draw bar settings. So let's go back to the options screen. And we've got one final thing here which is expression. Now. I can turn the expression down here, which is kind of like the volume, but it refers to the expression pedal. So on normal organs, what we have is an expression pedal, which is allowing the player to dynamically change the volume as they're playing. You get that kind of really lovely sound, as well as the Leslie speaker, if we just turn that on. Um. So I'm doing an absolutely bodge job here because I'm holding the mouse with one hand playing the chords here with my left, but essentially as they play chords they change and you get this kind of lovely swell and that in combination with the uh, rotor cabinet as well, turning on the Leslie to fast uh, is, is, a, is a beautiful sound. So what you can do is you can pair that with your uh, MIDI external MIDI controller for expression. Uh, you can also control it via mod wheel and stuff like that which we'll look at later. So that's the master section. Let's look at the click section. So click is the kind of uh, accidental, so to speak, or the kind of strange um, characteristic sound that comes from tone wheel organs. So if we, if we just pull key on and key off down, let's have a little listen to what it sounds like. Very, very subtle sound there. There's no attack. If I bring on the key, it's almost like percussion is happening, right? Actually, let's just turn percussion off so that we definitely aren't hearing any of that. So there is no percussion currently now, so these settings aren't applied because on our main window, percussion is off. So let's go back here. So this click sound is coming just from the key here. So you notice that we've got key on, but at key off, the sound simply stops. If we turn this up, you can hear there's a little click when I let go as well. So you can change these settings to how you'd like. Obviously that's louder and that's quieter. So here both on and off will get a click. And when you're like this, just at the beginning and you get it. So let's leave those at a kind of average setting. The pedal is the same idea. It's setting the click settings uh, or volume for the pedal itself. So if we go to, or the pedal notes, so if we go to split mode, so I can control the pedals. As you see here, the pedal's being controlled. Let's go back to options, and then let's turn the pedal, cl the pedal click off. So a nice, soft attack there, and now you can hear the click coming in. And this is controlled as well by this. So this is global click, these two, and this is specific to the pedal, because you might want really, really clicker upper and lower manuals, uh, but you might want a really soft bass sound and this is where you'd pull that down. So velocity is the velocity sensitivity of the click. So if you want no velocity sensitivity at all, in other words, the click is all the time, so you want to have this velocity set to zero. So now if we play, we've got the click all the time, even if I play really softly. Obviously we're going to get the organ sound, which is not velocity sensitive, so you can play harder and softer and you'll still get the same organ sound, but if you want, you can make the click sound sensitive to how hard you play on the keyboard. Let me show you. So if I play a note here, and then I play it softer as well, it doesn't matter. But if I turn this right up to full sensitivity, if I play really softly, we get no click. And if I play hard, we get more click. Okay, let's pull that back down there. So for the percussion section, what we need to do really if we're exploring it for the first time is turn off click because the click sound and the percussion sound can kind of get a bit confused in our mind. So I'm going to turn those down. I'm also going to go over to the main window, which as you remember, we have our sort of 
fundamental controls and you can see at the moment the percussion is off so if we tried messing messing around with anything in this window we wouldn't be hearing anything so we want to go to on and we'll leave this just at the current settings at the moment normal and fast and third harmonic so let's go back to options now there are two modes it's kind of sequential here but there are two modes so you can have mono mode where when you play a note i'm just going to turn some settings up here so we hear a bit of click There you go, there's a bit of a percussion sound there. So if I, if I turn the percussion off, you can hear that there's now an attack coming along. You can also see in our upper partials here that by adding in percussion, we get an upper partial here, the third harmonic, I guess, uh, is what that's after, is, is what that's doing. So uh, then we have these two modes here, mono or poly. So at the moment, mono means that every single Every single note that I play is, is kind of responsive to the first. What I mean by that is if I play one note, we get the percussion there, but whilst I'm holding it down, if I play another note, I don't get any percussion effect on those. So that's kind of like a synthesizer where you don't get the attack on any of the legato notes that come after it. Or if we want to have every single note be uh, affected by the percussion settings, we turn it to poly. So here, Let's compare that again. So you have to come on and off the key for the percussion to, uh, to work. The perk on preset button is a bit of a strange one. So you need to think about presets, which we looked at before down here. So the, when it says the B key on this setting here, B key or all, what that's referring to is the key switch of B. B, this one here. So I just went up through the chromatic scale. So we've got C0 for our first key switch, C sharp, D flat, D, E flat, etc., 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 all the way up to B here. And B is the natural setting. It's where your morph sliders are all the way up. And you see here, it goes away from the B. If I go down to my key switches again, I can slide through all of these as we looked at earlier. But what this button does here is it says that if you want the percussion sound to only be on the B key or whether you want it to be on all of them. So let me show you what I mean. So we've got this percussion sound currently loaded, right? Where we have, sorry, let's change our presets back. So we're on the B key. You can hear we've got quite a lot of percussion going on there. I'm just gonna bring the volume down a bit. Now currently we're on the B key setting and that means that whenever we play the B key, we're gonna get that percussion. But if we go to one of the other ones, the percussion disappears. So if you're morphing, that gives you a percuss percussive sound when you first play, and then you morph through, and you haven't got percussion anymore. So if you don't like that setting, you can go back to here and you can change it to all. So now what we have is the ability to have percussion on all of our... all of our presets. I keep on clipping here, I'm gonna bring the main volume down. So uh, next we have slow and fast time. So then you can change the attack time for the actual percussion sound itself. Let's have a listen to this. If we turn it down, we're effectively turning off the percussion and then we're allowing it to come in after 40, 40 milliseconds, or sorry, rather go away after 40 milliseconds. And then we can bring it back in. Uh, and this is effectively the volume for the higher part of the percussion sound. It pushes down the low as well. These guys are interlinked. So if we pull down fast, sorry, the other way around, if we pull down slow for this one and push up fast, they'll interact with each other, just like here. There is a bit of a glitch, actually, I've noticed in this program. They haven't updated it. But if we currently, we've got no setting here. It's very, very low. If we pull it all the way up, it doesn't affect the high, but as soon as I pull this, we can hear it pop in. There's just a little bug there. So upper level basically controls the sound of the upper manual, which is the only manual which receives this percussion sound, by the way. And if you turn it down, we get pretty much the percussion sound just as loud as we were having, but the upper manual effectively gets turned down. 
I love that clicking sound. I don't know whether you can hear this. If I turn it up a little bit, you can actually hear the inner workings of the instrument. Sounds all gritty. You can almost hear that the um, the mechanical settings inside of it being affected by the turning of that knob. It's a lovely, lovely part of this uh, emulation of the instrument. And then the velocity is the same idea about the velocity sensitivity. So here we have full percussion. And then here I'm playing softly and we're getting virtually no percussion. So Scanner Vibrato Chorus is where we can control the settings of the vibrato and chorus that we would have set on the main page. So here I have it on C1, which is Chorus 1. I'm going to turn the rate up and the depth. By the way, on Max you can always press Option and then click one of these dials to turn it to standard settings. For some reason the rate here, or the standard rate is 6.85, but, uh, that, but with most things like depth and volume and stuff like that. So if I have my volume here, I can turn it all the way back up just by hitting the key with my mouse and holding down option. So uh, I'm going to keep my rate up here, my depth, and we should hear the chorus coming in now. And I can change the rate. Now, if you can't hear that, I'm going to make it really obvious by turning the depth up. It's a pretty subtle sound, but you can change the depth of it here if you want. Uh, but this only affects the chorus, it doesn't affect the vibrato. So let me show you if I change it to vibrato 2. We can hear clearly there's a vibrato going on, but we can't change the depth of the vibrato. It's exactly the same, but we can change the rate, so... Okay, I'm going to turn off those settings. So next section we have is Morph, and that gives us two options here, either Step or Linear. And this refers to when we were going through the presets settings, Morph. So currently the, the, all of the standard presets have Morph set to um, uh, Linear, and only going through a small range of these presets. What this is actually doing is it's scrolling down from B through these presets here, but not that far, right? Let me show you why. So it doesn't go through doop, 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 all of these. It just goes through a few. And this is where you can change those settings. So linear, first of all, means that we go uh, smoothly through each of these settings, right? If you hear the sound, that's a bit loud. We're kind of morphing slowly through those settings. If I want to actually change through those settings like I would when I'm key switching, Let's change it to step and see what happens. But you see the range of it is only going to A there, right? And that is determined by this here. So the range is saying that we are only going from the B key, which is the B, I keep on switching back between these windows and it annoyingly resets each time. We're only going from the B key all the way down to the A key. So it's only through uh, three presets, right? So what we can change is all the way down to C sharp and that will be our entire octave of presets. Let me show you what I mean now. So I'm going to move my morph key, or sorry, the, the slider, which is the modulation wheel, and I can go through all of these apart from clear at the bottom. And that means that you get access to a really, really interesting gating sound, which is characteristic to uh, organs. Oh, bit loud. Let's turn this down. I should really be changing my settings, but I'm trying, trying to do this uh, quickly for you. Really, really cool sound. You can get some good stuff in there and you can change your presets to, to slightly more subtler settings as well. But it's a, it's, it's a nice arpeggiated kind of sort of feeling or not arpeggiated, but step sequenced. So uh, that's morph and you can control uh, that morphing via the mod wheel or any other uh, uh, controller, as you can see here. You can also learn the controller as well. Again, guys, if this wasn't enough for you, there's also another weird little setting here, which is called Edit Preset Key. And this basically allows you to uh, to kind of restrict your, what you can edit of the preset in real in real time, say you're in a live session or something. So, uh, for example, the, the best setting to have it on, in my opinion, is current. But if I turn it over to A sharp and B only, that will mean that in the presets page, we can only edit these two uh, switches here. Uh, sorry, presets. So. So I'm currently on A and I can change the sound of it, as usual. But if I go to one of these other presets, 
none of my tone wheels work. It's absolutely restricted to these presets. I don't exactly know why you'd need that, but I'm sure there's a reason, uh, but just so that you know that it's there. Okay, so that is the options window of the Vintage B3. Next, we're gonna go through the effects and then expert view.